Kingsman, this is Pastor Derek Thomas, and I want to welcome you to another Men's Manor Bible Study. We thank and praise God for the opportunity to be together, and we thank and praise God indeed for his word on today. As we finished the series on Abram moving from calling to commission, and we see how Abram's life changed so much so that his name changed from Abram to Abraham. We're now left looking at our own lives and looking at what the formula is for us, for our success. And it's a blessing to know that as God continued to move through the writing of the of the Bible and as he continued to move and using men to write the brief instructions before living, leaving earth that the Bible does compile and create, he's given us a distilled form of what Abraham went through that we can use and we can look at as shared with the disciples through Peter. And if we look in 2 Peter verses 10 and 11 of chapter 1, we're going to see where our next series is coming from. It's a three-part series, and it's going to be on understanding your calling and commission. And what it says in, these, in this passage of Scripture is this. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an interest will be supplied to you uh, abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what's being said here by God through the pen of Peter in his second letter that was written? Peter wrote general letters to the church in order to help us grow and to help us be strengthened and to help us be encouraged to do the work of ministry. So what we as men can do is take from it uh, uh, the realities of what Peter meant. And what Peter meant when he wrote this is, 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 look, you have to take time to realize and understand that God has called you. And if God has called you, you've got to be certain that what it is that he's called you to is, in fact, what it is that he's called you to. See, we as men have this thing called pride. And what pride can do is it can lead us into doing and saying things that we can, that we'll say God told us to do. But really it's us wanting to stroke our ego. It's us wanting to please this flesh. It's us wanting to do, quite frankly, what we want to do. But we have to remember again what our role is, uh, my brothers, as it pertains to the work of ministry here in the earth and what our role is in God's creative economy of scale. God created us to be the covering over our wives and over our children and over our communities and over our church so that we're the ones that are going forth as a high priest of the home and as the ones that are leading out in worship in church. Not to say that, our, that, that women and children cannot because they absolutely can and if we're really honest and frank with ourselves today, brothers, more churches are filled, most churches, I would say, are filled with women more so than men. But God has called us to be the head of the household, and, and God has called us to be the head of the family, and, and there's a disconnect. And, and what I'm finding, and what I found as I really studied through this, is I found that the disconnect came about because what we've done is we've taken this distilled form of this Cliff's Notes version of what we're supposed to do about making our calling and our, and our election sure. We've taken it and we've distorted it and we've distorted it uh, um, by so by using what I call selective hearing. And what happens with selective hearing is that you hear only what you want to hear. You hear only the parts that are pleasing to you. It's been proven scientifically because I did sales for a long time before I ultimately moved into ministry as my primary vein. Uh, what, what I did, what I learned in sales in theory and in practice, is that most people hear, on average, every third to fifth word that you say, especially when they feel that they're being pitched with something or they're being uh, sold something. When they feel that they're being sold or that someone's attempting to sell them on something, it's human nature to tune out. You listen to just enough so that you can keep up with the conversation so that you can give what I call a pre-canned response of I'm not interested or not at this time or maybe next time. 
Why? Because we have selective hearing. We've made up our minds. We don't want to be sold. We've made up our minds. We don't want to take anything different. Getting down to the base level of it, we've made up our minds. I'm happy where I'm at. I don't want change. Change is bad. Even if we're in a bad state and whomever it is that's coming to you sees that you're in a bad state and is offering you something that's going to be a benefit to you, we're programmed to be comfortable where we are. Because we're comfortable with what we understand. We're comfortable with what's comfortable to our flesh. We're comfortable with keeping things easy. And therein lies the problem. When God calls you and I, uh, my brothers, to, to be the men of valor, when he calls you and I to make the change in our lives like Abraham did, when he calls you and I to get out of our comfort zone and come away from our kindred and come away from our country and move to a place that he shows us in the spirit, and in the natural is something that's uncomfortable. So what we do is we get selective hearing. Well, God, you said move, so I'm going to move. I'm going to move from right here to right here. And Lord, I moved. You said move, and I did. I moved. God's like, that's not what I told you. I told you to get out of your country and get out, get away from your kindred and go to a land that I'll show you. Got it, God. Okay, husband. Okay, wife. Or, or, or Okay, wife. Okay, children. Okay, friends. Okay, family. I need to move so I can't call you every day. I'm going to move to every other day. You, you, you see where I'm going with this, man? God does not need us to selectively hear, but he needs us to fully and completely obey his full command. This is why when Peter wrote this in this second general epistle, he said, be even more diligent to make your calling and election sure. So we, we have to make sure that we get this thing right. We, we got to stop walking, man, in selective hearing. Because what happens is that when you don't hear well, you can miss critical pieces of information that can save your life. If you're crossing a busy street and you, you fail to look both ways, if you're looking down reading something and you don't hear the horns of the vehicle that's coming and you walk out in front of it, you're going to get picked off. And that's what the enemy is banking on, my brothers. Uh, the enemy is banking on us not listening. The enemy, the enemy is banking on us having selective listening. The enemy is banking on us uh, being more in tune with the, with the white noise that he's putting out there of the world than being in tune with God. No one ever said, as it pertains to following God, brothers, that it was going to be easy. But we have a blueprint that we can follow in the form of Jesus Christ. See, Jesus made it very, very plain to us that we can make it. That's why he asked, uh, uh, the, uh, that, that's why he asked the Father to make him a body so that he could wrap himself up in flesh and come down and show us how to do this thing. We can make it, but we have to put God first. We can make it, but we can't selectively hear. We've got to listen and be in a constant state of listening. My grandmother told me one time that um, God gave us two ears and one mouth because he wants us to talk less and listen more. And that's very true. As I've gotten older, I've come to realize that some of the greatest blessings and some of the greatest opportunities that I've found and experienced of God moving in my life is for me to just shut up long enough to truly let God speak and not only hear, but truly listen. And that's why selective hearing is so dangerous because number one, selective hearing relies solely on this, relies solely on our flesh relies solely on the physical apparatus that we have. Each and every one of us have ears on the side of our head. Now, some individuals do have challenges with hearing and some individuals do have hearing loss. And those individuals have, have, have tapped into in the natural to function what God desires us to tap into in the spirit. What they've done is they've learned how to rely on their other senses even more. They've learned how to uh, adapt via sign language. They've learned how to read lips. They've learned how to be more cognizant of their surroundings. And God needs us in the spirit to be the same way. He needs us to be paying even more rapt attention with with our sight lines and, and with our gates, to guard our gates even more, to understand the signs of the times. And, and what Peter was help, trying to help uh, uh, us understand here by writing this is that we've got to be mindful of what God is doing. We can't afford to just selectively hear what we want to hear, but instead we've got to keep all of our senses 
fully engaged. And as it pertains to the, to the audio senses, we've got to not only hear, which is what we're physically able to do because we got ears, but we've got to listen. Meaning we've got to make a conscious effort to genuinely allow what's coming into our ear gates from God to resonate in our spirit and digest it and meditate on it so that we can respond and act accordingly. But far too many of us men are seeking to be selective hearers because when we do what I just described, what it does is it challenges us. It stirs our spirit. It makes us get out of our comfort zone. It makes us get up and do something. It, it makes us stop being lazy and stop being fat and sassy and stop sitting still and, and, and prompts us to make a difference because what it does it, it, is, it, is it stirs up our other senses to begin to not only just look but genuinely see with our eye gaze. We need to begin to catch the vision and see what it is that God desires to do through us in our lives, in the lives of our spouses, in the lives of our children, in the life of our community, in the life of our church. And it forces us to take a much broader perspective and a much broader view because by nature, we have tunnel vision, men. We'll get focused on something and put the blinders on. And all we see is that something. But God wants us to take the blinders off and realize that what we do does have an impact in the kingdom. What we do has an impact in other areas of the kingdom. What we do is designed to be a blessing to our brothers and sisters because we are our brother's keeper. We are our sister's keeper. We are our children's keeper. And God is calling us to do the keeping necessary. And keeping is not comfortable. Keeping is not easy. Keeping is not a nine to five job. Keeping doesn't give you weekends off. Keeping doesn't take off holidays. Keeping is a 24-7, 365 proposition. Keeping entails us interceding. Keeping entails us staying uh, uh, prayed up. Keeping entails us studying. Keeping entails us keeping our ear to the heartbeat of Christ. Studying forces us to fully rely on God. And fully relying on God means that we've got to listen to what God is telling us. We've got to listen to what God is trying to teach us. We've got to listen to it all. We can't choose to hear some of it. We got to listen to it all. And, 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 and herein lies the destructive element of selective hearing. And what happens is, is that the information that we ignore and, and tune out proves to be the valuable bit of information that makes the difference between success and failure in a situation. And Peter found himself in this instance, as we find ourselves today, in the midst of believers suffering from selective hearing. And, and, and for Peter, the sufferers of his day fell into two philosophical categories, the, 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 the Gnostics and, and, and Antinomans. And, and let's talk about them because those are the ones that represent where many of us are today. The ones that were called the, 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 the uh, Gnostics, they were taught that in addition to believing in Christ, one must also receive gnosis or, or, or esoteric knowledge. And what they concluded that, that, uh, that they concluded that, that uh, evil was formulated in the midst of knowledge not being possessed as it should be. So in plain English, evil happens because you don't know better. To a degree, that's true. But that's true without you having to seek out the extra knowledge to come to that realization. The only knowledge that we need, the only gnosis that we need is an understanding of who God is and the realization that Christ died so that we might live. Because as we trust God and as we genuinely listen to God and not just hear God, in listening to God, he'll give us what we need to know. He'll give us the gnosis that we need, but he won't give it to us as gnosis. He won't give it to us as logos. He'll give it to us as rhema, inspired and breathed word from him, because you can only get rhema if you're genuinely listening. You can't hear rhema. It doesn't sound like anything because rhema's like the wind. You, 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 you feel the wind more so than you hear the wind. You hear it how, but you feel it before you hear it. God needs us to be in a rhema mindset because 
because when we're truly seeking God with all of our heart and when we're truly seeking God with our ears and truly here looking to, 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 to listen out for what God is saying, God can then speak to us with the rhema word to give us the revelation insight that we need to go forth and to give the knowledge needed for our brothers, for our sisters, for our children, for our community, for our church to bring about a supernatural change. God is about supernatural changes. God is not about esoteric uh, uh, reflection. God is not about look at how good I look. Look at how smart I am. Look at how much I know. It's not about what we know. It's about how well we know him. And men, that's what we're missing. It. We're so concerned with beating on our own chest. Look at me. Look at me. That God is saying, I need you to instead of beating on your chest, saying, look at me, look at me. Be like the man in the Bible when the parable was told by Jesus about the two that were praying, the public and the plebeian. And, and, be, and, and instead of beating on your chest, saying, look at me, smite your chest, saying, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, help me to know you more. Lord, help me to listen to what you're saying because I'm missing it. Because apart from you, I can do nothing. Help me to listen to you, O oh God. Help me to have more of you, O oh God. Help me to have a greater understanding of you, O oh God. That's what God is calling us today, brothers. He's calling us to not only know better, but to do better. Which brings us to the, the, to the, to the antinomians. The antinomians believed that since salvation was by grace alone, the requirements of moral law were irrelevant. Basically, the do, do as I say, folks. See, a lot of us have that do as I say mentality. And that do as I say mentality is a dangerous, dangerous proposition. Because of where we sit as it pertains to God's desire for us as men in the creation story, we can't afford to have a do as I say attitude. Because Jesus talks about those individuals that have a do as I say attitude. He calls those individuals hypocrites. And hypocrites have no place in the kingdom because they're saying one thing and they're doing something else. And usually what they're doing is not lining up with what they're saying because what they're saying is right. What they're saying is what people want, to, what, what they feel people want to hear. What they're saying may very well line up with the word of God, but their actions are speaking louder, louder than their words. And because their actions are speaking louder than their words, their actions are leading people astray because there's a disconnect between what they're saying and what they're doing. And when you're seeking to have selective hearing, my brothers, that's what happens. There's a disconnect between what God said to do and what we're actually doing. And when we say, well, God, I'm doing A, B, and C, God is like, but I told you to do X, Y, and Z. Why are you doing A, B, and C? Well, I heard you say go, and I heard you say say this, and I heard you say think this, but God is saying you didn't listen to what I said. Because many times when we opt to selectively hear my brothers, as I said earlier, the critical pieces of information are usually what we leave out because that's the hard stuff. We leave the hard stuff out. We leave the difficult stuff out. And that's the part that needs to be dealt with. Like young people say, that part right there is what needs to be addressed. That part that you left out right there is the part that's going to save souls. That part right there that you left out is the part that needs to happen for me to do the redemptive work in you, says God. For me to do the delivering work in you, says God. God, for me to do the transformative work in you, says God. So God, I need to understand that you're saying something. I need to like the title of today's uh, teaching is, God, did you say something? Of course, the answer is yes. God is always saying something. God never stops speaking to us. He's speaking to us in a still, small voice. But many times we miss it because we're so busy uh, hearing all the noise that the enemy has in our lives. We're so busy hearing all the hustle and bustle that's taking place that God is saying, I need you to slow down. I need you to listen to what I'm saying to you. I need you to listen to what I have to tell you. I need you to listen to what I'm trying to share with you because what I'm trying to share with you is life-changing. What I'm trying to share with you is life-altering. What I'm trying to share with you is something that's going to get you on a trajectory to bring you back to me and reconcile you unto myself on the other side. We as men have to make sure that our calling and our, and our election are in lockstep with what God is telling us. We've got to listen to God's instructions. We've got to listen to God's direction. 
And we got to be okay with his direction and his instruction not lining up with what we want to do. <clears throat> because it's not about pleasing our flesh. It's about walking by the spirit so that we don't obey the lusts of the flesh. Because the lusts of the flesh are like the hook on Showtime with the Apollo. Like when Sandman hits you with that hook, no matter what you're in the middle of, when Sandman pulls that hook, you move it. The enemy's trying to get that hook around us, my brothers. He's trying to get that hook around our marriages. He's trying to get that hook around our families. He's trying to get that hook around our homes and around our communities and around our church. He's trying to get that hook so that he can pull it. But I'm here to let you know that God needs us to listen. He needs us to listen. He needs us to be in a constant state of asking God, did you say something? God, did you say something in this situation? God, help me to hear what it is that you said. Help me not only to hear, but help me to listen to and obey what you're saying in this situation. Help me listen to and obey what you're saying in this circumstance. Because God, unless and until I hear you speak to my heart, I won't know what to do. I won't know which way to go. I won't know what to say. God, I desire to be pleasing in your sight. And as I seek to be pleasing in your sight, my senses will be even made even more keen to you. I'll have an even greater sight line of you. I'll have an even greater sense of hearing of your word. I'll be moved even more to do what it is that you call me to do. But God, I'm asking the question, did you say something? Brothers, has God said something to you? Is God saying something to you even now? But the payoff question is, are you hearing what he's saying or are you listening to what he's saying? God is looking for us today, my brothers, to listen to him, to genuinely listen to him. We got to know that we've been called by God. The word call in the Greek very quickly is from a Greek word kaleo, which means to call. It means a calling, a condition, or an employment. So in other words, God has hired us. When God calls us, that means he's hired us. That means I've reviewed your resume and I've looked you over and, 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 and I've, I've already interviewed you because you've already said yes to me. So you know what? I want you for this position. But I need you to understand all the benefits and everything that comes with this position. And as we gain greater insight of what that is, we can then move out with the assurance that we're doing all that God has called us to do. So as God continues to speak to you, my brothers, be mindful of what he's saying. Be in tune to hear what he's telling you. And be willing to move out boldly. And be certain. Because God doesn't make mistakes. And God does not misspeak. When it comes to him speaking into your life. If you don't know Jesus Christ today. As your Lord and Savior. Won't you pray this prayer with me? Let's pray. Lord Jesus I come before you a sinner. I come before you with my spiritual ears stopped up because I never said yes to you. Forgive me for becoming so comfortable with the white noise of the world that I shut you out. I confess today as your word says with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I believe in my heart today as your word says that, Father God, you raised him from the dead. So because I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and I believe in my heart, God, that you raised him from the dead, I am now saved. So I thank you for coming into my heart now, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the privilege of salvation, Father God. I thank you for the indwelling of you, Holy Spirit, that I might become all that, God, you've called me to be. Help me to not only hear your voice, God, but to truly listen. And as I listen, help me to obey. I thank you that by faith, I am now saved. In Jesus' name, amen. 
I praise God with you for praying that prayer with me. And I, I welcome you to the household of faith. And I, I welcome you to the kingdom as a king's man. Please email me and let me know about your conversion experience today. Please continue to follow us through our social media platforms. We welcome you. If you're looking for a church home, we, we welcome you and, and my faith receive you and thank God for you becoming the newest member of Living Witness Ministries. Until next time, this is Pastor Derek Thomas encouraging you brothers to continue to listen to God and continue to allow him to work in your life as he moves you from calling to commission. God bless. Living Witness Ministries is a church on the move dedicated to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ through the preached and taught word, community activism and outreach, and practical ministry designed to meet needs, bless hearts, save souls, and change lives. You can sow into the ministry via our cash app at dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. That's dollar sign LW Ministries 2020. Sow your seed into the good works and good ground of Living Witness Ministries today. And thank you for helping us reach the world with the life giving way. We pray that you were blessed by today's broadcast and would love to hear from you. If you have any prayer requests, praise reports, or would like to learn more about Living Witness Ministries, you can contact us by email at livingtowitness at gmail.com. That's the word living, the number two, witness at gmail.com or by phone at area code 404-955-8846. Again, that's area code 404-955-8846. Until next time, we encourage you to continue to live your life as a living witness. Thank you.